Yaskawa. <laughs> Hello, my name is Derek Lee with Mecha Troll Inc, Members Association. Today I'm here to tell you a little bit about Mecha Troll Inc, what it is, what it does, why you want to know about it. Mecha Troll Inc is a field network. It connects the devices, so you had a demo with a servo drive and then you had a controller. And they're connected by a line communicating some kind of protocol. Well, that protocol is Mecha Troll Inc. This is just a quick overview of what I'm going to be going through. The concept of a field network is that it takes all these wires from the analog pulse system and it reduces it down to a wire that you can daisy chain across drives. This 50 pin cable is uh, where you're getting all your I.O. from this front panel. You turn these switches, it goes through to this cable. Let's say you had five drives then you would need five of such cables and wiring all these 50 pins. So with Mechatrolink then, you don't have to wire all of these, every signal that comes from it because the data is digital. It's actually two wires and the controller is communicating what is necessary to the drive. It really simplifies the wiring and lowers the cost as a consequence. That's the concept of field networking. Mechatrolink is not the only field network out there. You might be familiar with other networks like DeviceNet or Profibus. Those were before the time of motion control. Those were for I.O., controlling I.O. through a network. Same kind of concept, but now Mechatrolink was designed with motion in mind. Let's send a lot of data, not just I.O. Let's send position data. Let's send velocity data. So Mechatrolink, we position ourselves as a motion network along with like Circos or Ethercat, for example. Kind of a diagram to show where do we position ourselves. And as with any field network, it is very useful for many different applications out there. What's interesting about Mechatrolink is that if you want to design a system and you have to pick a controller from vendor A and a slave device from vendor B, there are a lot of controllers you can choose from from vendor A because a lot of vendors have developed something with Mechatrolink. For example, these are master products. PLCs, controllers, they're not all just Yaskawa things because Mechatrolink is an open network. Anyone can develop a product with Mechatrolink. Some examples of slaves or follower, a lot of different products available again. Some details about Mechatrolink transmission itself. Mechatrolink 2 has a transmission characteristic as shown. The next generation Mechatrolink transmits 10 times the amount of data, number of bits, but Mechatrolink 2 is sufficient for many motion control applications. Every network will evolve and support more stations, for example, 62 instead of 30, if you ever see a machine with more than 30. Mechatrolink 3 is a solution for bigger machines that need more axes, other things to note, the cable for Mechatronic 3 is now an Ethernet cable. Mechatronic 2, you saw it was kind of like a USB connector. It's not a USB, but it is that connector. It's different because it has some inductors in it for signal improvement. So don't use a USB cable for Mechatronic 2. And with Mechatronic 3, there are other topologies supported, not just daisy chaining, but you can also have a hub to branch out different slaves too. This is a system configuration showing Mechatronic 2. Mechatronic 3 is the same kind of thing, but you can have more topologies. Uh, Mechatronic 2, this is the daisy chain example. The thing to note here is that a C2 master is uh, supported with Mechatronic. So if you wanted to connect to your drives with Sigma Win through Mechatronic, you can do that connecting your device at the end of the line. Getting down to the Mechatrolink signal, that's at the bottom here. It shows that every portion of the Mechatrolink signal has sectioned out for different slaves. For example, this portion is the command for the first slave. This is the response for the first slave. So with a digital network, you're going to have some delay 
from when your motor actually moves compared to when it receives a signal. The important thing to note is when you connect a system that has a bunch of Mechatronic devices, what is the delay between each device so that you can accommodate for any kind of motion difference, showing that the Yaskawa has this delay of 425 microseconds before the motor starts from when it receives the Mechatronic packet. It has to interpret the packet, whereas the analog system doesn't have to interpret as much because it's getting the signal it needs. This is the whole Mechatronic frame, the things you can customize with it. This is more for the master to note, do you want to support a C2 master communication? That's right here. Like, do you want to be able to allow your users to connect Sigma Win at the end of the line or not? You can design your master to have this piece in your Mechatrolink transmission cycle. The major selling point of Mechatrolink, which makes it stand out from all other field networks, is that it has this data retry at the end of the transmission cycle. If you have a noisy environment and your signal comes along and it gets corrupted, Mechatrolink will resend that data, but in the same transmission cycle, just at the end of it. For example, let's say you are cutting a circle. You're streaming data, and if you miss a packet, it's not going to be a circle. You'll see a nick in it. That's for noisy environments. For Mechatrolink, since it has the data retry, it can have the data resent and the, the chip handles this so that you don't have this kind of improper motion, this nick in your circle, basically. That is a major selling point of Mechatrolink. Noisy environments. If you have a noisy environment, consider Mechatrolink. So before I mention that uh, the Mechatrolink transmission has sections for each device, this breaks down into what are those details in that section. The first portion and the last portion are the header and the footer, but the middle is where all the data is. There's two different modes for Mechatronic 2. Do you want to send 17 bytes or 32 bytes? I should mention what is 32 byte mode. That's if you want to monitor more data each transmission cycle or you want to set parameters at the same time as other things, then you can use the additional 16 bytes at the end. The difference with that isn't shown here. This is showing the 17 byte mode command example would be the connect command. Uh, you can see a lot of the data isn't actually used at zeros, but there is a section of data for your command. The pieces for the command translate into these one byte codes. Just showing that Mechatronic is quite simple. This is the picture I was telling you about that you would see the Mechatronic chip. This will be updated in the future, but you can see the nice uh, Yaskawa logo on the chip. Uh, it, it is now replaced with a Mechatronic logo because Mechatronic is an open standard not connected to Yaskawa. Mechatronic was started by Yaskawa, but has since become an open standard. Mechatronic's been around for actually 20 years, but hasn't been opened until five or six years ago. So Yaskawa had always been using some kind of, it wasn't called Mechatronic at the time either, but the technology is the same, it was called YENet. 20 years of proven motion control experience. You'll see a lot of the ties in there, but it's quite separate now. Just to show you that it's pretty simple to implement down to the hardware level of Mechatronic, you have these three components, very simple. I did mention this before about the Mechatronic 2 cable. Don't use a USB cable. That's what it says on the bottom, only because it has inductors on both ends of the cable. Flex type, non-flex type are available. Ferrite core without ferrite core are available. The kit is available too, if you want to build your own length. Down to the software development of Mechatronic, the Mechatronic Association provides quite a bit of software pieces to help you with your development. That's the grayish portion at the bottom. What the Mechatronic member would do would be the upper portion of this picture. Another great feature about the Mechatronic network is that we provide a lot of tools to help you develop. I'm going to go through these in the individual slides. 
This little guy here is the network analyzer. So if you are unsure if your mechatronic data coming through is correct, you can stick this on and say, hey, this mechatronic data is or is not correct. If you want to turn your standard PC with that has a PCI slot into a mechatronic master, you can do that as well. These cards are available from Yaskawa that allow you to write in some C code and then send the motion out through your PCI slot using this card. Fun stuff. This motion wire software is hardware and software that will let you test if you're developing a slave and you want to see if it responds correctly to the Mechatrolink communications. You can use this as a master to send the raw Mechatrolink data to your slave and see the raw response. And also, if you don't want to buy a reel of 300 resistors, we provide these sample kits, five components of each, so you don't have to buy a mass quantity if you want to do uh, development boards without having to buy the whole packet of chips. Mechatronics certifies products at the headquarters facility in Japan. If you want to put a Mechatronic logo on your product to say you conform with Mechatronic, you can put it through the certification tests. Then vendors who consider, do I want to use your product, will see, oh, it has Mechatronic, so I know it's been certified. There are several tests done at the conformance lab. Noise immunity, communication. Not something you can do at home because they do the noise test, hook up probes. When you become a Mechatrolink member, you have access to technical documents. You can ask questions and get answers and also get information about the conformance test. Publicly, you can access the news and events and see a list of Mechatrolink products and other sort of things. Don't let this scare you. This is just, there's four different membership levels with Mechatrolink. Basically, if you're the highest level, you can get involved with determining what is the spec of Mechatrolink. If you're the free member, and it is free, you still have access to the documents. It's just fees are more, like if you want to certify your product, it's going to cost more. Free members can buy the chip and also get free support. I did mention this already briefly about the benefits of joining Mechatrolink. This is just a more extensive list. Mechatrolink is a global organization. We have facilities in five countries. This facility houses the U.S. branch of Mechatrolink. And the number of representatives of the U.S. branch is one. And he is talking to you right now. <laughs> when you call this number for this MMA United States, that rings my second line at my desk. But it is here. You don't have to call Japan for questions. You can call me. It's worldwide. Support is quick. It's easy. Thank you for your attention. I wish you success with your implementation of Mechatrolink. Please visit www.mechatrolink.org for more information and for other Mechatrolink benefits.